All right, guys, Aaron Shriver, Melodies and Memories Music Media. Corey Kent, dude. Well, first off, we were just kind of catching up. Man, welcome, man. Two years ago, I think I first heard your music. I'm like, I got to talk to this guy. I'm like, one of these days, I got to talk to him because I admire your songwriting, dude. Some of the best you. songwriting has been coming up. And you kind of start off as a songwriter when you come to Nashville, right? Yeah, What yeah. made you kind of want to be the performer as well? Because I know some guys just kind of get in that songwriting group and they want, that's where they want to coast for a while. Right, well, first off, I, I started off as an artist first, okay. and um, you know I was growing up in Oklahoma. Always that, that was always the dream, and then somewhere along the way, I kind of got it in my head that you know maybe maybe I should write songs for other people. Yeah. And so I moved to Nashville when I was 17 after like a chance encounter with Willie Nelson. I was 16 nice. when I met Willie. Uh, we played a song together at, in Tulsa at this place called the Spirit Bank Event Center. Nice. And it changed my life, you know. I, I was really about to just give up on the music thing altogether. And I met Willie and he was like, hey man, like keep going, go to Nashville, write some songs. Yeah. And that meant a lot because you know, Willie had been to Nashville and, and left, left and yeah. to Texas, and then he found his way, right? You tell him going back, it's kind of, so yeah. he, But he, he did realize that some of the best songwriters in the world come out of Nashville. Oh, yeah. And if you want to learn and you're not great at it already, go be around some of the greats. And so yeah. I did. I went, you know, literally six months later, I packed up everything I had. I graduated high school a year early yep. so I could move out there That's awesome. to, <laughs> to pursue yeah. songwriting. And uh, man, what ended up happening was, uh, you know, I was sleeping on buddy's couches, sleeping in my truck, doing anything I could to get by. And then, um, you know, a couple years into that, uh, long and winding story, but a few years later, uh, after a few moves and then moves back, I ended up with a publishing deal. Nice. Writing songs for other people as a staff yep. writer. And in between that time, there were a couple record deal offers that I just respectfully turned down. Yep. They were not right. And I knew what I wanted to do, and I knew when it didn't feel right. And nothing had felt right. The, the songwriting deal felt right. And I started writing songs for other people. And uh, I wrote some songs for William Clark Green, yeah. and Colby Cooper, and uh, Brandon Jenkins, and a bunch of like Texas Red Dirt guys mm -hmm. that were, were doing great in the scene. But nobody in Nashville was cutting my stuff. And then uh, the, the decision got made for me. You know, one Monday I picked up the phone and you know, my boss was like, hey, I believe in you, but it's time for you to go. You yeah. don't have a job here anymore. And I was like, you know, we just had our first baby girl, which yeah. is like yeah, the I mean, perfect it. time to lose your job. Yes. It's right after you have your first kid. So uh, I've actually been there. <laughs> <laughs> I know how that felt. So <laughs> it sucks. It's horrible. You're like, what yeah. now? So first I was sad, and then I got freaking angry, and then I was determined, right? And so my wife and I, we moved to Texas. Mm -hmm. We were gonna build it on the road of, uh, you know, me and the boys hopping in the van and going out and playing shows and building it that way. And then the whole world shut down for a bit. Yeah. Uh, but that's I right knew, when I started listening to you. Right around that time, I was like, man, yeah, everything was done. Yeah. Twenty twenty one, things started opening yep. back up, putting out as much music as we could, you know, playing as many shows as we could take, and that was really the transition was you know the songwriter world the rug was just pulled right out from yeah. under me and it became apparent that i needed to do something else to make a living um so it was partially necessity but also it was me getting back to my roots yeah you know i never wrote music i never got into music because i wanted to write songs for other people i feel music's going that way too because more songwriters are, be, are the performers now too i love that because i don't think anybody could portray a song better than the songwriter can i'm a huge jonathan singleton's fan uh, dude so that's my good. guy so, so whenever good. i listen to his like him sing a song it, it just means so much more to me than yeah I listen to an artist who cut it or not so yeah but hey we're here in chicago windy city smoke out is your first time playing it here first or? time man we were Dude. supposed to play last year okay uh but we ended up with a great opportunity to go what 45 cities with, with jason out yeah dude yeah. and we played <laughs> tinley park yeah because of that show it knocked us out we had to call you know windy city smoke out yeah. and say hey this is a you know bummer we've been looking forward to this but ed brought you back got you back in ed, here again dude <laughs> thankfully we didn't burn the bridge thank you ed no that's uh, awesome i've been looking forward to this yeah, for dude. years i mean this is one of the the premier festivals in the states yeah. and they do it better here than just about anywhere and we know that just from the reputation yeah, so we're yeah, excited yeah. that it finally worked out where we get to be here and, and play some of uh, our brand of country music and it's gonna be awesome I, I know they're ready for you man chicago is definitely a country music town as of late i mean mainly because we just talked about 
about Ed, but he's yeah. brought some of the best here, and that's why we yeah. can't wait to see your set later. But dude, you got a new album come out September 6th, Black Bandana. Uh, what themes or stories are exploring this album? Like, where are you going with this album, and how does it differ from yeah. maybe your previous work? Great question, man. This this record, um, Black Bandana is really symbolic, and it, it started off kind of. Uh, I don't know, it was never really meant to evolve into what it is, but you know, I wore a black bandana when I rode down to meet my now manager yeah. for the first time because I was riding a motorcycle and was trying to keep bugs out of my face. Like that's the reality. <laughs> that's how innocent it started. And he was like, What is that? You know, why are you wearing that? It's like, Well, I rode my motorcycle here. He's like, You should keep that. It's unique. It became and, your sunglasses, like Eric Church has the sunglasses, <laughs> it became your sunglasses. That's right, man. it became my, yeah. my Raven. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so um, but what ended up happening is like as we me and my my buddies that write songs like we started exploring well what does this mean does this have a meaning is it deeper yeah. is it symbolic and and the theme that we found throughout my whole story is you know from the pavement company days where you know i was just doing whatever i needed to to provide for my family and music looked like it was dead in the water and mm -hmm. uh the the recurring theme is the only reason that we are here right now there's two reasons and the first one is because god blessed us and the second one is because we never gave up yep. when everybody else threw in the towel when everybody else waved the white flag we never gave up Agreed. and so then we started thinking about what's the exact opposite of a white flag <laughs> black bandana, black bandana. Yeah. so off to the races we write this song called black bandana which would be the title track on the record oh, yeah. And if there's any question as to what that means right now, you listen to that song, you'll know exactly what it means. Yeah. And uh, it's really just like this is a this is a resiliency thing, right? It's a it's a album for the underdogs. It's for people that don't feel like they've been recognized or gotten where they want to go in life yet, uh, and they are not gonna give up until they get there. Yeah. Like that's what this record is. That's who this record's for. The people that are still putting in the work. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Like the new single, I, I, dude, I just can't. It gives me goosebumps Thanks, listening man. to it, dude. Because I, I'm a dad of two. I'm 42. I'm, I'm to the right. point now. Where my parents are getting older, and you are. You're never ready for any of this stuff, dude. The, yeah. the next thing, when you're a kid, you always thought your parents had it. Your parents knew what they were Superman, doing. Superman, right? Yeah, and then then you become in their shoes. You're like, oh man, they had no clue. <laughs> they were figuring out as they went too. It's so. a crazy moment when you realize that they're all, everybody, all of us as parents, as kid, like we're all just making it up, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that that song "Never Ready" is is important. You know, I think it was uh, just an important thing to say, and it was real to my life. You know, it talks about me and my wife, and when we found out we were pregnant for the yeah. first time, we were so unprepared. Right? We were 21 years old. We had no money. Like there was not. It was not the ideal time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and uh, there's never obviously an ideal time for losing somebody that you love, but it is a part of real life, and so. I don't know, man. I've always just been really proud of putting out country music that meant something more than taking a girl home from the bar. Yep. You know, and there's nothing wrong with those songs. They have their place. There's a time for, there's a season for everything. There's a time for everything, yeah. right? Agree, man. But for me, what, what really makes me... Uh, my ears perk up is when a song hits me in the heart. Yeah. And so that's one that's, of them. That was that one, dude. It got me. I was listening on the way up here. I was like, man, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to talk to him about this song. <laughs> no, so we got to wrap it up. Before you yeah. go, though, you're getting ready to go do the headlining tour, dude. We're excited yeah. to see you today. Any chance Chicago is going to come on that tour? I know you got Milwaukee stopping uh, on that tour schedule. There's a black mark after that. Anything maybe Chi Town can get know. excited for? <laughs> I actually, I'm not even going to lie to you. I don't know what that yeah. black mark is. <laughs> like, I don't man. know what city that is. I, I literally I like you know, Milwaukee, Chicago, and a fit. But one weekend at a time. Yeah, we'd be excited to have you here, man. We are excited that you're going it. on a debut headline tour Thank because you. you deserve it more than anything that I know. Because, like I said, we've watched your career the last three, four years, and dude, honestly, I'm so freaking proud of you. You've thank been so you, busy the last couple of years, and thanks thank for finally spending a couple minutes with us, buddy. And so, thank you, guys, Corey Kent's gonna hit the stage later on today. It's hot out there, but when he gets out there, he's turn up the heat. I Come know. Come on, check him out, guys. Thank you.